Hello, good morning to all. Today I will continue with a topic on pediatric urology, which is urinary incontinence in children. Just want to mention here that I have not taken any questions from any book and have made them up myself. Let's get started. The topic today is urinary incontinence in children. So it is your exam day. You have your timetable in your hand which shows that your first table is pediatric urology. You will be asked two vivers each of 10 minutes duration in pediatric urology. Once the bell rings and you approach the pediatric table, shake hands firmly with the, both the examiners while maintaining eye contact and with a pleasant smile. Have a seat. Take paper and pencil which is provided to you on the table and jot down what the question which the examiner is asking you. Note while answering, maintain eye contact with both the examiners and keep your answers short and precise. So let's start. The examiner asks you a question. You have been referred a 10-year-old girl who is always wet. How would you assess her? So I will take focus history inquiring about the age of child, the age at toilet training, whether it is primary or secondary, continuous or intermittent, at what particular time the child wets, is it only at night or does it occur only during day daytime or is it diurnal and whether the child voids normally also. Further, I will inquire about any associated low uni tract symptoms, risk factors, family history or any neurological condition. Now, I will stop here. Let me just uh, tell you a few points in the history. Before you start answering uh, this question, you have to uh, think what is the differential or what are the causes of urinary incontinence in children. And your history should mainly aim to differentiate between the anatomical, neurological and the functional causes of urinary incontinence in children. So let me just explain to you one by one as to why I asked uh, particular points in the history. Firstly, I asked about the age. For me, the age at toilet training, that was important. And um, uh, secondly, I asked whether it was primary. Primary here means lifelong. I could think of ectopic ureter in the female. The third point I asked was whether it was continuous or intermittent. So uh, when somebody tells me it is continuous, I think in terms of anatomical cause. And when somebody tells me that it is an intermittent form, then I would think more in terms of a functional cause. While neurological cause can be either continuous or intermittent. Then I also asked about the timing. If the if the uh, child had only uh, urinary incontinence at night and there were no other symptoms, then I could think of primary monosymptomatic nocturnal enuresis. Also, I mentioned about whether the child voids normally. Now, I'm thinking about the ectopic ureter here as the cause. Relevance of family history. The primary monosymptomatic nocturnal enuresis, now we know that the nocturnal enuresis have a, has a family history in about 75% of the cases. So this is, uh, I have um, just explained to you as to why I included those points in the history. And you can note that my history is very precise and short and crisp. And I have not added any irrelevant points in the history which would take a lot of time. I have to keep in mind that I have to complete the scenario in 10 minutes. This entire scenario should progress from history examination investigations till the treatment and the complications. So um, let's move on to the next question. What are the risk factors for urinary incontinence in children? Well, these are UTI, constipation or bladder stimulants, any uh, fluid which is stimulate the bladder like cola or black currents. The next question the examiner will ask you would be, what are the key points in examination? I will do a chaperone examination in the presence of mother, especially looking at the general well-being of the child, whether happy or quiet, and will examine the abdomen to rule out palpable bladder, and chaperoned genital examination to rule out epispadius. Further, I will inspect the back for any hairy patch, flat buttocks, and would complete my examination by looking for wasting of calf muscles and an abnormal gait. 
here i will stop again just to let you know that if there is a palp if on examination you find a palpable bladder think in terms of either a bladder outflow obstruction or a neurologic cause and uh, if there are palpable stools again you think in terms of a neurological cause or simply constipation next question the examiner will ask you is what do you think her cause of wetting is the cause of wetting in this girl could be a uti neurological anatomical functional nocturnal enuresis or a bladder outflow obstruction can you define urinary incontinence for me it is defined as an involuntary leakage of urine tell me the functional causes of urinary incontinence in children these include overactive bladder giggle incontinence deferred voiding dysfunctional voiding or a lazy bladder what is overactive bladder well it is urinary frequency and urgency with or without urge incontinence and nocturia what are the neurogenic causes of urinary incontinence in children these include spina bifida or sacral agenesis and what do you think are the anatomical causes of urinary incontinence um these are ep extrophy epispadias ectopic ureter in females so if the girl had daytime and nighttime inter intermittent urinary incontinence how would you investigate her i will ask the parents to record a bladder diary and will send urine dipstick and consider an ultrasound scan of the kidneys and bladder so what would you look for in this ultrasound scan i will look at the ultrasound scan of the kidneys to look for duplex kidney which may indicate the presence of ectopic ureter or hydronephrosis to rule out a bladder outflow obstruction also in the ultrasound scan of the bladder i would be looking for a thick walled bladder and post void residual would you routinely do video urodynamic study in children with urinary incontinence no it is not routinely done only if i suspect a neurological cause of bladder dysfunction in children based on the history and examination then i can do it other indications for doing a video urodynamic study in children include when there is no response to the conservative management or when i'm unable to reach a diagnosis in a child so having ruled out pure nocturnal enuresis a neuropathic bladder and an anatomical cause you have ruled out all of these causes so um how would you treat her now i will educate and counsel the parents and the child and will explain the cause of girl's urinary incontinence that it is more likely a functional cause and will consider simple bladder training and timed voiding and to treat a urinary tract infection if present furthermore will ask the parents to avoid black current drinks cola caffeine tea and to prevent constipation now majority of children will improve with these maneuvers so the examiner would ask you then despite the behavioral modifications the symptoms do not improve what is your next treatment i can offer anticholinergics as oxybutynin what is the mechanism of action of oxybutynin oxybutynin is an anticholinergic which acts by blocking the muscarinic receptors on the detrusor muscle preventing the contractions of bladder smooth muscle and thereby increasing the and also increasing the bladder capacity can you tell me the dose of oxybutynin in children yes the dose is around uh, 2.5 mg bd and i can then increase the dose further as this child belong is around 10 years of age so uh, i can give this patient a uh, child 5 mg bd what are the side effects associated with anticholinergics it is associated with dry eyes dry mouth constipation and what is the efficacy of using anticholinergics it is effective in about 2/3 of the cases now the examiner can either stop here or if you are going very well they can proceed further the child has no response to anticholinergics 
Is there a role of intravesical Botox injection in non-neurogenic detrusor overactivity in children? Yes, after discussing in the local MDT, I can offer the child intravesical Botox injection who are refractory to anti-muscarinics. What is Botox? Botox is a neurotoxin produced by Clostridium botulinum. And how does it act? It inhibits the release of acetylcholine from the presynaptic cholinergic nerve terminals leading to decreased muscle contractility. What is the prerequisite? Uh, the child needs to be taught, the child and the parents need to be taught intermittent self-catheterization because there is a higher chance of the child developing urinary retention after giving intravesical Botox injections. And uh, what complications can you tell the parents? As far as the complications of intravesical botulinum toxin is concerned, these include um, urinary retention, UTI, hematuria, dysphagia. Are you aware of the success results or how, how many in how many percentage is it effective? It is effective in about up to 80% of the cases. The examiner again can stop here or they can go on. She is extremely nervous at the thought of intermittent self-catheterization and wants an alternative which does not involve an intermittent self-catheterization. Are there any other options you are aware of? Yes, I am aware of neuromodulation in the form of PTNS, which is a posterior tibial nerve neurostimulation. Although mean, mainly it is used in adults, but it has also been used in children and young adults. So the mother wants to know if this daytime wetting is quite common and can it get better? Functional daytime wetting is seen in about 3% of girls and 2% of boys of 7 years of age. Usually it would resolve spontaneously and it is expedited by the measures which I have uh, talked about, about the behavioral modifications and uh, majority do resolve by the simple maneuvers. So this is how one scenario uh, of uh, uh, urinary incontinence in children will go and will progress. So I hope uh, that you find it useful and thank you very much for joining.